All right, welcome back to part two of the Experimental Design Explainer, where dreams don't just become true, they become true experiments. You may recall from last time we had two examples from Disney. One was about improving uh, the experience of getting into the parks, and we had a new approach called cast queuing that appeared to be reducing the total wait time to get in. But we had a lot of concerns about the experiment. Maybe there were other things that could explain that change. Also, with getting more people to sign up for the Disney dining plan, we had a new approach we were testing and it looked like it was selling um, more dining plan days. But again, we had some concerns about the experiment. Maybe there were some other explanations that could uh, explain uh, that, that increase. And so now I'm gonna introduce a good friend to explain to us one of the bedrocks of true experiments, which is trying to achieve a causal connection. And who better to explain that than the Pillsbury Doughboy. The causal connection in a case of the Pillsbury Doughboy could be if we poke him, <laughs> does he giggle? And if we don't poke him, does he not giggle? If we can figure out a way to run an experiment that we can prove that the poking is causing giggling, then we have a strong experiment. So let's go back to the Disney example about improving uh, uh, reducing the time it takes for people to get into the park. All right, so here's the experiment as we had it before. And we had this notation showing that we collected data beforehand when we didn't have the new queuing. We did something, we added the queuing system that was cast queuing, and then we measured it afterwards. I'm going to add some different terminology here, which is calling this pre when it was the as is, and then post, which is when it was cast queuing. Now let's think about a different way to run this experiment to try to mitigate some of the problems we had before, such as maybe there was just some really bad PR for Disney between the pre-period and the post-period that was causing these changes. Or maybe the competition happened to, happened to open a big new ride right between the pre-period and the post-period, so there were just shorter lines in general at Disney. Well, a way to mitigate this would be to measure the cast queuing both before and after the implementation of it, and also measure the as is, both before and after the implementation of cast queuing. Now, how could we do this? Well, what if we just split up our total entry gates, and for some of them we did cast queuing, and some of them we did the normal queuing, and we ran them all at the same time. And then we could look at the difference from before to after for cast queuing, and compare that to the difference from before to after for the normal queuing. And in this case, if this is what our data looked like, it looks like actually the cast queuing doesn't have a big impact at all. Every line is going down in the park. How do we re represent this in terms of our notation? Well, what we have now is we have an observation beforehand on some of our gates in the park and then we add cast queuing at those gates and then we observe them again. Similarly, for some of our other gates in the park, we observe them ahead of time with normal line procedures. We don't implement cast queuing at those gates and then we observe them again to see the wait times still with just the normal policy for line queuing critically important is this R. What it means is that which gates get cast queuing and which ones do not is randomly assigned. We'll talk about the importance of that as we move forward. What we're doing here is we're adding a control group alongside running the new cast queuing as a way to see if the changes that we see in cast queuing are maybe changes that we're actually seeing everywhere. So to walk through what this looks like uh, in terms of the experiment itself, we would implement cast queuing for eight weeks alongside the normal approach. Um, as you can imagine each park may have more than one entrance. Let's say it has two entrances and use cast queuing at one of those entrances and the normal queuing at the other, and we would randomly pick which one gets cast queuing, and our data collection would be the same. Our data, however, would look a little bit different. Now we have a new column here by 
for each gate saying was this one that received cast queuing or not and also i threw a new column in at the end which was just the difference in wait times from before to after what kind of tests could we run in order to see if cast queuing had a different impact in the change in wait time from before to after than the as is queuing did this just goes back to running an independent samples t-test but this time on the change in wait time gate type is the independent variable did it have the normal queuing or the cast queuing and then our dependent variable as i just said is the change in total wait time there are other ways to run this analysis but this is a great way to get started running this analysis remember our other example getting more people onto the dining plan our concerns here were that what if this change we were seeing from before to after was just an artifact of our experimental design and it really wasn't due to the meal exchange itself. Well, let me introduce um, a couple changes we could make to increase the causality that we are seeing if we see a change uh, in our experiment. Um, here is how we note our experiment. And in this case, our notation doesn't change a whole lot. We have two groups. One group gets the new plan and the other group does not and we only observe them after they get the new plan. So one change to make is to randomly select who's in the study in the first place. Don't just have Disney Rewards members in the study if you ultimately want to apply this to a lot larger group. Now a reason, there are multiple reasons to do this. One of them is being able to apply your results to that larger group. But another one is, is that Disney Rewards members might just be predisposed for other reasons to respond to this new plan. And we really want to target in and say, does this meal exchange part of the new plan? Um, is it causing people to be more likely to participate in the plan? And by randomly selecting people to be in the study, we're more able to isolate that effect. More critically, I would argue, than random selection is random assignment of the people to each plan, represented down here by this R saying, we're going to randomly assign who gets the plan and who doesn't. Now, why does this matter? If we're not randomly assigning folks, the people that get the new plan might just be people that we're picking that are already going to be spending more on the plan, regardless of whether their meal exchange was there or not. We need to make sure that we randomly assign people to these two groups so that any differences between the people wash out in the old plan group and also in the new plan group. Now our data actually looks really similar. The differences are that in this column about people, it includes um, randomly selected people, not just people that were in Disney rewards. And then secondly, in this column about did you get the new plan or not, it is that you were randomly selected to get this new plan or not. It wasn't just the high value customers that got the new plan. So to summarize, we have three keys to true experiments a representative sample randomly assigned to groups you do different things to which brings us back to our good friend the pillsbury doughboy who we want to see if when we poke him <laughs> does that cause giggling so first we get a representative sample of pillsbury doughboys Secondly, we want to add a control group, some that get the poke <laughs> and some that don't get the poke. And finally, we want to randomly assign people to either the control group or to the group that gets the poke. With these three elements, a representative sample, random assignment to a control group and a treatment group, now you're on your way to having experiments that can actually show causal connections between the changes you're making and the impacts that you're seeing.